Let's turn to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Um, the theme is all over. Today we just want to look at uh, having nobility in the word of God and learning that nobility and also desiring to influence others. Uh, Paul is this journey person, a person who loved to journey around and uh, he had three these significant journeys. The first journey he went preaching and then he went back to the calling city and then went back for the second journey and went to the third journey. In his second journey, he made a visit. He made a visit to, to several churches and of notable um, influence and especially for today is that these two churches, the Thessalonian church and also the Berean church. And so after visiting the Thessalonian church and all the stuff that happened to him in the Thessalonian church, he came to Berea. And so in chapter 17, verse 10 of Acts, start giving this account of his Berean experience in this church. Let's, let's read together um, Acts chapter 17 from verse 10. As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue as usual. The Bereans were, were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek Jews, Greek men. Then the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea. They went there too, agitating the crowd and stirring them up. Then verse 14, the brothers immediately sent Paul to the coast, but Silas and Timothy stayed at Berea. The men who escorted uh, Paul brought him to Athens and then left with instruction for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Amen? You know, as we were saying that uh, this ministry, when, when the Lord God was starting to work through this leadership, we were thinking of, now, what do we do about the name? And, and, and one of the things that we were, we were searching and thinking through and we went thinking through other names or other motivations to many of the couples' ministry because this is, we are not the first people. As I always say, we are not the first people, we will not be the last people. People have done it. And so we, some, some few, some few thinking, but when I look at all this thinking, they are behavior-based or behavior-motivated uh, reasons. And so look, we, we look at some of these uh, motivations for couples ministry. The first one was divorce is not an option. Is that an, a, a good one for couples? Praise God, church. I thought that this needs an amen. How many wants to divorce? I don't want to divorce. In fact, I'm, I've not even enjoyed it more. So I want more of it. So divorce is not an option. And that is awesome. That is a good one. And then I also looked at this. Two are better than one. Amazing. Amen? Amen. But because people have ideas, some people also thought that the best one for them is together as one. And as I said in the Swahili service, somebody has done a song in this, and I fear mentioning the name because it might not be a, sec a, 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 a gospel artist. So let me not get into trouble. But together as one. And somebody, some people also thought that we have this theme, loving without limits. I know the young people who are in relationship here um, will tell me, Pastor, that should be our theme for next year. We love without limits. And then some also thought that maybe we think of P31. Now, P31 is Proverbs 31. Uh, and Proverbs 31 focuses more on the, on the, on the, on the wife. And so we were asking ourselves, 
What about the men? The wife of a noble character. What about Kinyili of a noble character? And so we were thinking, oh, what should be our motivation? Now our motivation, and I think this is beyond just marriage aspect, it goes to our Christian lives, is nobility. Amen? It's nobility. Uh, nobility in the word. And in that word, we desire, and every Christian should desire, to learn through that word. And not only to learn, but that learning must have an effect. And so there should be an influence to the learning of the word of God. Amen? Now this cuts across. It cuts across how we bring our children. It cuts, it cuts across how we relate together within the marriage fraternity. It cuts across how we do things, our Christian lives, how we relate to the people that we study together. And all this, it cuts across. Now because of this, we were just thinking through this word nobility and you've seen how Paul has used nobility here he's saying and the Berean were of noble character compared to the Thessalonians so what is this that the Berean did that was lacking in the Thessalonian church so I looked at the word no noble and in the Greek word the word noble is from that word iegenes and Eugenes word is, is also close to the word kalos. Kalos means beautiful, Eugenes means noble. But again, there is a sister word for them in Aito Agathos. Agathos means be, uh, good. Now, when you look at, you do a good study of the word of God, you look at it. Good is the first surface of something better. But when that thing is good, it goes a little bit deeper to have that beauty. It have that kalos. But when it is the good and the kalos needs to be traced beyond just the surface. And so they need to be traced from something that is happening within somebody. Something that is happening within a person. And that is when the word noble comes about. So the word noble, as you can see, is a mixture or a compound for two words. The first word is Eu, and the other word is genus. So Eu is the word that means, maybe an adverb that means well, or very good, or very well, or well done, or rightly, or righteous. That is the word Eu. But there is this connection of the word genus, which means ethnic, it can also mean birth, it can also mean uh, something like you know, generation, descendants. It can mean so much. It can mean a family, offspring. So what I'm saying is that when Paul is using this word, Eugenes, to the Berean, what was the Berean doing? The Berean were of birthed noble character. Birthed character. Or a character that is well from birth. A character that is well from the descendants. A character that is very well not from a surface, but that is motivated from within. Now, when we looked at those other topics, human beings can be really crazy at times. Because when we are together as one, people can be together, and we see them together, but they're not together. Is that, is that applicable? How? Um, Mama Caris and I can be walking here every single Sunday holding hands. And guess what? We are not together. Is that possible? What if we, we, we also make a, an attempt that every Sunday we will come and when we come in, the first thing, we just wait when people are seated and then we, we give ourselves a good hug in front. But that can happen without the inner motivation. It can just be a surface behavior. It can just be something that people can see. When we are talking about nobility, we are talking about something that is well from inside. Amen? I desire to be a Christian whose life is well from the inside, not just from a surface behavior. This is my desire. Not only in marriage, not only in noble marriages, but in my own life as a Christian, 
that in everything that I do, there is a wellness within me. There is a well that is birthed. Uh, one funny thing with the wellness that is birthed is that you can't hide it. The overt behavior will be evident. That is our prayer. What he's saying, he's saying that the gene of wellness in the hearts of the Berean was good. The very well birthed nature of their character was notable. The right kind, they had the right kind of character. They had a well descendant, not nurtured character. And like I said, somebody will question me and say, Pastor Luke, you're talking about a bath wellness or an innate, inward build wellness. You're talking about genes? These are natural things. They are not things that people learn. They are not nurtured. They are nature. But what does the Bible say? Or what does the Bible mean when the Bible says we are born again? When we are born again, when Jesus Christ comes into our life, he gives birth to you afresh, including the gene, because he is the creator of those genes. Amen? So there are, there are some kind of characters, and we are saying that, you know, this is my personality, I can't change. Have you heard that? This is my personality, I can't change. This is me, my friend. That is you. But there is the what the Creator wants about us. That is the change that we are praying to happen within our lives. That is the change that we are praying to happen within our families. That we will have nobility. Nobility in our lives. There is a, a person who got himself into trouble and said that in African Christianity is a mile wide and an inch deep. And of course he got himself into trouble because many, many, many African theologians have written so much trying to counteract that statement. I will join them in counteracting that statement as well because I don't believe that only uh, Christianity doesn't make sense only in Africa. But if I have to change a statement in that thing, I will just change the statement Africa. But the rest of it will just remain to be real and to be true. The rest of it will remain real and be true. And so when, when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you take when you take that statement and you start to talk about that statement, let me ask you a question. If Christianity is so deep in our lives, why is it that it is not informing our workplaces? If it is not, if it is deep in our lives, why is it not informing our families? Why is that our families are just the same? Why are corruption issues still talked about us? But let me finish with this question. How many have ever been into a dowry payment forum and then the person, the elders who are there said, let us deal with our issues first. We'll bring the church later. Have you ever been to that? Yeah. When you, when you are trying to negotiate diary and you bring an idea that you know I'm a Christian, we need to weka uh Christo -huh, kando kwanza to deal na ikitu. If Christianity is so deep in us, why is it not informing our marriages? My prayer and our prayer is that nobility will be in our lives all through. And that that nobility will inform our lives. Three things that Paul points out, and I will point them in point forms, that demonstrated nobility in the Bereans. Number one, they accepted God's word. When God's word was preached, they accepted it. Number two, they did not only accept God's word, but they also examined that word to show that it was true. But not only that, they desired to continue in that word. And then they said, Paul, even as you are going, leave for us Silas and Timothy to continue nurturing us into being more noble in the word of God. An apex that I had as number four, they also cared for a brother. Because when these people came to fight against Paul, they took care of Paul and took 
Paul to safety. And so these four things happened and demonstrated their nobility. My question to us is, what will demonstrate your nobility? As a Christian, are you noble enough? Are the things that you are doing from inside or there are things for the surface for people to see? Are you caring for a brother? How do you receive God's word? Do you examine God's word after it has been taught to you? How practical is it in your life? Or is it something that we just do for our own sake? Amen? May God help us to be noble enough. And in our nobility, it comes from our inside. When we are living in our families, let everything that happens in our families be a product of an inner working of the Spirit of God in us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Our God and our Father, may you help us to be noble. And to be noble here means to allow you to work in our lives internally so that the behavior that we bring about will be a product of the Spirit working in us. Forgive us for so many times that our goodness has just been an outward show. Forgive us many times that your word has never been a priority. Forgive us for many times that you've never looked at your word intently. Forgive us for so many times that you've never cared for a brother. Help us to be noble enough to look up to you and to desire you as God and our Savior. And so, Lord, I thank you so much that even as we are leaving this sanctuary today, as a young person, as older men, as the congregation of A.C. Milimani, that the question that will linger in our minds, are we noble in character, just like the Berean church? And so we thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless us. Let us be noble.